I recently ordered a 3018 Pro CNC on AliExpress in hopes of being able to mill some PCBs, wood, metal, and possibly acrylic. Today, I'm going to be unpacking and assembling it, and sharing my experience with you. I ordered the 3018 Pro CNC router on AliExpress for $160, and a week later, this package showed up at my doorstep. When I first opened the box, I was met with some assembly instructions and a user manual. Unlike some other Chinese manufacturers, these assembly instructions were clearly labeled and actually really easy to follow, so I was pretty satisfied with that. Everything is really well packaged in these foam trays and comes out in layers. My CNC router shipped with these laser safety glasses even though I didn't order a kit with a laser attachment. On the first layer, we have all the electronics, motors, cables, bolts, and some other small bits and pieces, as well as the Z-axis carriage. The second layer has this aluminum profile that will be used as the CNC bed. It has this protective plastic around it that is satisfying to peel off. The last layer has all of the larger pieces that are required to build the frame of the machine. So far, I only have two major complaints about this kit. First of all, everything on the bottom layer is oily. I think the oily substance was just tapping fluid from when the ends of the aluminum extrusion were tapped. Which leads me to the second problem. There were aluminum shavings all over the ends of the extrusions. I think this was also from when the holes were being tapped and not cleaned after. These shavings were hard to remove because they stuck to everything. I tried washing the aluminum pieces to get rid of the aluminum shavings, but that didn't work too well. I eventually just took paper towels and spent half an hour cleaning up the aluminum extrusions by sliding some paper towel through the T-slots. This was a massive pain in the backside, but after this was done, the shavings and oil were all gone so I could finally start to build the CNC. When I started assembling the base, nothing was labeled, so I didn't know what bolts to use, but after looking around for a bit, I could work out what parts were needed. The base overall was very simple. I just screwed the base together with a handful of bolts and inserted the three rods where the y-axis will run. I then mounted the bearing blocks and aluminum profile to the linear rods. It took a few tries to make the base square in order to get everything to slide smoothly, but once it did, I tightened it down and it moved fine. After the frame was assembled, I noticed that the frame was not straight and would wobble back and forth on two corners. I tried bending the frame a little bit to straighten it out, but this minimized the problem instead of getting rid of it. The side pieces for the x-axis were oily as well, but could easily be cleaned off with a paper towel. There are six sliders that go into the aluminum profile to secure the x-axis side pieces in place. I think a better method to secure these pieces would have been to bolt through the aluminum. I repeated mounting the other x-axis side piece in the same way on the opposite side. I also made sure that they were both in line and in the right position using calipers. I started by mounting the two aluminum extrusion pieces for stability. The spindle carriage assembly was already pre-assembled, so I could just slide it onto the rods. Last, I mounted the linear rods and threaded rod. I inserted the spindle motor into the spindle holder in the Z-axis.
After this was completed, we could start the electronics. I wired up the stepper motors, spindle motor, and power cable with the included wires. This was very simple as all the connections were already labeled on the controller board. Now all that's left to do is some cable management with cable wrap and zip ties. All in all, this whole machine took one to two hours to assemble. Although no parts were missing, the kit comes with little to no extra parts, so losing pieces is not advisable. When I went to make my first cuts, I needed to clamp down my material to the aluminum bed. The only thing that was not mentioned in the instructions was how to assemble these included clamps. I looked at some of the pictures online and eventually found out how to assemble them. While they aren't a perfect solution and a little tedious to use, they do hold thin materials down to the aluminum extrusion. There was a flash drive that came with the CNC that contained a PDF version of the assembly guide and had a GRBL candle software on it. I ended up not needing the software after initial testing because I found another program online called Easel that I preferred. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate this machine working, so if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. I will also put the link to that demo video in the description when it comes out.